Hey, how y'all doing out there today? Uh, hey, listen, since it's uh, kind of like the heat of the summer and I really pay attention to uh, what I see on social media, one of the a few things I really search out just for my own, uh, my, own, my own knowledge and my own edification on what days people are getting chemtrailed heavy. Uh, a lot of people put up pictures and thank you for doing that. And I think we all should. When it's a really bad, unusual day, not just a few planes, but man, when they got the grid going, or like like behind me today, uh, I wish I could turn this around, but man, that uh, you can tell it looks like a fluorescent light or an alien ship standing over my meadow back there, don't it? <laughs> Look at all that kill. Wow. I mean, and uh, uh, well, there well, there's some things going on, uh, both in our universe, our solar system, and here on planet Earth. Uh, that are all affecting this. And listen, y'all, this this is also a reason why a lot of us are anxious and agitated. And it's it's why you should be seeking natural remedies and not going to man man made medicines that uh that contain fluoride, that contain met metallic particles. Uh, there's all kind of metals in in uh, our medications, even the opiates that used to prescribe people. The, the Tylenol and all has a certain amount of aluminum and. Uh, other stuff look it up i mean that's that i'm not here to talk pharmacology what i'm here to tell you is the man-made weather manipulation the chemtrails and what's going on in our universe all have one thing in common it's probably gonna uh, cause a disruption on earth um, when solar uh, the sun our sun hits its goes back to its peak cycle solar grand maximum where it sends solar flares and solar energy from the sun that reached levels of uh, like the Carrington event back in the 1850s, where there wasn't only where there was only the telegraph line for electricity. Everything wasn't running on electricity back then, so remember that. And uh, and it wiped it out, and it even killed operators and shocked operators. And uh, yeah, it was pretty major. That was like an X20, uh, something like that was the hit now in the shape our magnetosphere is in. Y'all, it would wipe everything we got, and I think that's why they have us divided so much. This is the main reason and chemtrails and what's going on with our solar system with cosmic ray maximum that we're going through now which means we're getting a maximum amount of cosmic uh energy cosmic rays are bombarding the earth but we have a magnetosphere that may be up to 20 percent weaker than it was when the carrington event happened uh, just a hundred something years ago so we got to pay attention now uh, it, it dropped 10 percent our magnetosphere which is by the way is the bubble around us that blocks back solar energy, the bad stuff we don't need. It bo blocks back the, the cosmic rays. It hits this. It keeps the Earth good and strong. Um, if we'd have used Nikola Tesla's uh, way of having free electricity for the world, it might have even intensified it and made it better. But uh, but this weakening and things getting through destroy um, electronics, destroy computer systems. That's why they down the planes. That's why we had so, miss so many missing planes. Uh, all through the early 2000s, and now they do shut down the airports. Look it up. They shut down airports when we have solar flares coming. Uh, with the KP index, which is an index for for measuring uh, uh, bad solar, high solar activity. Uh, when it hits KP5 or better, they'll shut down uh, airports in Europe, here in America, wherever this is going to hit. So they they kind of they kind of know this is happening, but what they're not telling you. And maybe the pharma, the, the big pharma has something to do with this or the medical industry has something to do with this. I have no idea. But this also affects us. It affects me and you. It affects them chickens back there. It affects those guineas. It affects the trees. It affects everything. The things that man is spraying and the things that are coming through our weakened magnetosphere. And look, let's give the geoengineers one thing. It wasn't always about weather warfare, y'all. They knew this was coming. The evil thing is they're trying to save an electrical grid that they run off oil and gas uh, and, and coal seam gas. No matter how they run it, they run it off a fuel source when they could have got it free like Nikola Tesla gave to us the idea, you know, and uh, it got that idea got ruined by J.P. Morgan, who owned all the coal burning power stations at the time. Ruined a man's name, ruined a man all over greed. And, and here we are stuck in this situation. Um, now they're trying to protect it, and they think that they can do it. That's why the Pentagon says they're missing $22 trillion. That $22 trillion is being spent since the late 80s, early 90s, since right before Agenda 21 was signed, and they told you we couldn't live past 6 billion people. They told you all that in 1992, uh, the way we were going. Uh, but really, it was the way the Earth was going to change. They knew all this. 
um, that we can enact the sphere, all of this. The, 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 in, the information wasn't commonplace every day because the computer and the internet wasn't as well kept like it is right now. And we didn't have this information. I uh, say that the information we're getting today in 2018, we couldn't get in 1992. So now we can see everything that everybody else sees and we know what everybody else knows. And the thing is, they're going, our grid's going to pop. And hopefully, hopefully the atmosphere won't. I think Mother Earth, um, without a, without electrical grid, with, with what might happen after a, uh, a electrical grid collapse or shut down, um, I think after, hopefully after 40, four or five decades, maybe things would start to snap back to normal. Uh, and maybe people would be smart the next go around and not use the system that we use this time, fossil fuels and burning, burning shit, basically, <laughs> to, to have a power source and could use the planet itself. Maybe like they did with the pyramids and, and back in the day, nobody knows, but that's all considered to be possibly a big global power source that they try to use. But there again, a natural shift in the planet caused the flood, right? And it caused a lot of these civilizations to disappear. These may have been great civilizations back in the day. Samaria, Babylon, Mesopotamia, those all might have had great civilizations and things were perfect, but some natural event. Well, guess what? About every 400,000 years, about every 40,000 years, about every four or 5,000 years, about every 400 years, about every 40 years, different things happen on different sites. They, they put all nice catchy names to them like solar grand minimum and solar grand maximum and cosmic ray maximum and the magnetosphere and this. What it comes down to is our earth, whether it's you, whatever shape you believe it is, we are in a solar system. We are in a magnetic electrical universe and it is constantly, constantly changing and evolving. And we're in a process right now where many of those cycles are going to happen at the same time. It's not all a bad thing because guess what? We're born, we live, we die. When you get that mentality in your head, then you'll realize that no matter what happens, even if the whole universe collapses, and there was nothing once again, the creator takes it all back and makes it nothing once again, uh, you did live. So live is what, that's why I talk to you so much about brotherhood and living and, and getting along and coexisting and, and doing better. But here's the thing. I will never not have hope or believe that we can change what we see today in the sky, that we can change the fake food that they're having to make to go along with these changes, get it now. We can change the fact that they want to buy the water and sell it back to us. Another game, see, because they're going to spray the sky because we're going into this bad period. And another thing is not looking at it like a bad period. It ain't the end of the world. It's just the beginning of a new time period. It may be and most likely will be without electricity. Um, it may be with them continuing to do what they're doing in the sky. Nobody knows. They shouldn't be able to fly. I mean, it, it should not plane out of the sky like crazy. So I don't see how they can spray anymore. Uh, then you'll see that the global warming is a lie and we'll actually go to the global cooling stage that we're going to. Because you, what you got to pay attention to with weather is not how long the winters are or how long the summers are. You got to look at the extremes. How many cold weather extremes are there versus how many hot weather extremes there are? Put these two together and we have more cold weather extremes. We are, we are building up more ice on the South Pole than is melting on the North Pole. So we are actually, and it, this has happened before. This is why I don't really like to treat, teach none of y'all true history. And it's probably why the, well, they can't take away the fact that the flood story and the ice age stories are in all major history. From the Han, the original uh, Hans dynasty in China, that actually started documenting history to today. So everybody knows uh, every religion that from all those beginning and, and their history all talk about great floods and, and great ice ages in, in time. But, it, but human beings got through all of them, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't because somebody built a boat because they got a warning. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, it wasn't because we, you know, walked around, stuck up a woolly mammoth's ass until, until, until it got warm enough to crawl out. You know, or like hands, or like Luke Skywalker in that uh, Star Wars movie where he was freezing and cut his little creature open and crawled up in his guts. That ain't how it works, y'all. We survived things because we're human beings, and man didn't completely destroy this, but I'm not letting one human being off the hook for being suckers, for pushing it along. We should have win another couple hundred years, y'all, easy. 
a couple hundred years where none of us would have mattered. None of us would have knew nothing about this. We could have lived good life cycles, drank perfect water. But no, the Industrial Revolution, the last 120 years, has been the most detrimental and, and activated and pushed a lot of these things. So a lot of these weaker cycles that come around, say like solar grand maximum uh, and solar grand minimum that seem to just swap around in a, in a decades period, maybe decade and a half, not nine to 12 years, they swap around. Um, see last uh, solar maximum would have been, so it's gonna be in 2012. So say around, uh, yeah, 2012, so the, ne the next one's coming in 2025. And you also notice that in 2025, that's when American population and a lot of the um, white colony, Germany, France, the UK, Australia, all their populations are looking to uh, decrease. I remember from the Deagle uh, population statistics and how the money's going to change and everything. Um, I'm getting a little traffic this morning out here in the mountains. I don't own any. <laughs> but anyway, so with all these things going on and you you wondering where you stand in all this, maybe even, uh, where, or even what you want to believe, I think it's gotten to a point no more that you can feel your, you can feel some of these frequencies. You don't have to have an open pineal gland and be connected to the mother. You don't have to know all of these kind of things. Sometimes you just feel agitated. Or sometimes you, you're in areas and, and you were feeling in a very good mood. And it's not just like walking in a mood in a room and picking up on other people's energy. It's almost like waves of things going through the air. Uh, the the rate and, and, and migraine headaches, um, um, depression, um, fights that start on a dime, you know, just boom, man, you're instantly fighting light and like, hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? What'd you say? Blah, blah, blah. Trump, Trump, blah, blah. I hate you guys. Obama, blah. And everybody's going at it. Um, over nothing. Over nothing. Uh, I'm, I'm 54 years old. Uh, I've, seen a, I've seen a lot of things in my life. But what I really watch is the progression of social conversations dissolve. Does that make any sense to you? I watch how we can't even hardly talk to each other no more. So that's why it's been important for me to kind of like talk about things like this. Cause see, I'm seeing the connection, but it ain't all man-made. Like I told you, it ain't all just geoengineering. That is a big part of it. No doubt. We see the chemtrails. We see these steel blue skies. We feel the fluorescent sun burning our skin. When we used to, I was just telling the brother, he's here, here he's there at the farm. He's uh, 30 years old. And I was trying to tell him, man, before you was born, uh, I said, all you've ever seen is SPF 40 and SPF 20. You've seen sun protection cream. When I came up, uh, everybody put on this oil. Uh, they didn't put on uh, sunscreen. They put on sun tanning lotion. And it smelled like coconuts and bananas. And you walked around looking all greasy. And everybody bumped off each other. And they had all the swimming pools messed up. You weren't supposed to jump in the swimming pools. You weren't. Uh, I can't remember the name of some of that. Wine Tropics was one of them. And it doesn't smell great. You wanted to drink it, but it, it was oil. And you could get under the yellow sun on the beaches of Florida and be a Yankee, a white, lily white Yankee, and not even get burned up bad. It used to be funny when they had the tomato head. Nowadays, they come out with blisters like they've been in a fucking fire or something. And it's in crazy. And then they talk about, oh, the sun gave me melanoma skin cancer. No, the, the cancer comes from the, the SPF. 40, it comes from the skin protectant. The sun that uh, you have know, cancer never has. Uh, that's some insane shit. It's a rare skin cancer that are that are not uh, uh, like dangerous. You know, they're not malignant type cancer. You can get you can get tumors and stuff like that from it. But the burning, the blistering, and it can't come from the sun now because it's going through layers of chemicals and and metals like aluminum and barium and stonium. And it sure it filters through. And it's like a like back we used to take a magnifying glass, you know. And, Take a magnifying glass and get it in the sunlight and burn something, burn a leaf or something, you know. If you were cool, and if you weren't cool, you were burning ants. <laughs> she be burning them ants. But you know what I mean? And that's what this sun feels like now. It's like being under that magnifying glass. So you got to look at what they're doing there, um, what they're trying to protect. But nobody wants to pay attention to really why they're trying to protect it. The, the lava fault flowing in uh, Hawaii is natural, just like it also snows in Hawaii every once in a while. And they'll have snow, snow capped mountains, and they'll, they'll put that up every once in a while, like, oh, there's lava in Hawaii. Oh, there's, there's uh, uh, ice in Hawaii. Happens all the time. Um, what you really need to be paying attention to is, is like wild ass lightning storms. Every night we have this electrical current that goes all the way 
all the way from South America up through Central America, up through Middle America, right through here in West Virginia. We're having the thunder, beautiful thunderstorms almost every night, at least three or four a week. And I know a lot of y'all are seeing these thunderstorms. Big electrical change going across our globe. Our poles are shifting. Um, and what can you do about it? You know what? That part, you can't do nothing. What can we do about the chemtrails flying in the sky? I don't know, y'all. Now, that one, to be realistic, hypothetically, you would have to stop them at the ground. So whatever it would take to do that, and I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying that would be the only way you can't stop them. But uh, uh, it really, it really, oh, y'all, this, uh, this is Dominion en Energy coming through. These are the frackers. There's the fracker, so there's some there's a little there's a little frack wave for them. Hey fracker, there's you a wave. Uh, they got Dominion en Energy up here with a methane burning station, and now it's going to be going full force because the Chinese are building a pipeline up here. So that's why I'm talking to y'all about some of this stuff. I ain't talking to you about because I know it looks like it's all up down the road. They, they they love it down there, but the, but the Chinese are, are fracking them with a pipeline coming up here about three miles up from me, and new pipes just a half a mile up the road, which means they're Probably going to come across that mountain right there. You just seen three fracking trucks right there uh, in a row. Um, they're raping these inter these resources. China runs off coal seam gas. They're going to be the next superpower. Because guess what? Either they knew that it was going to be ready, that all this was going to happen. Did y'all know that China either it has a satellite going around the moon or they actually have a satellite on the moon that is just measuring the thickness and the strength of the magnetosphere? The, the, the thing that protects us from the sun and from cosmic energy and we're at solar grand minimum and hardly having any solar flares go look this up y'all need to pay attention to, to solar data and you might be and listen you know what i can do i can watch ben davison of suspicious observers every morning uh before, and he does it before the sun comes up and before i step outside i can almost tell if i'm going to be sprayed that day or how heavy i'm going to be sprayed that day or even at what times I'm going to be sprayed at or where I can look for friends of mine on Facebook or on YouTube and see where they're showing me they're being sprayed. Son, that is very important uh, when the coronal mass ejections, uh, the coronal holes that come through and the, and the streams that come off of those, all of this affect our mental behavior. Um, it's, it's why they're pushing the meds. That's why I'm trying to talk to you about that. It keeps us scrambled. It keeps us divided. And the whole time, what it's going to boil down to is just Hey, if it was a power grid collapse, and let's say we, we got it all back to right in a half a year, and that's being sweet about it, that's being nice about it, to a livable, you know what I mean, like a 1920s <laughs> uh, lifestyle of electricity until we could build back, and because we're, we're great builders, we sure like building shit, we built this crap. Can you get by for six months? Are you in a spot where none of that's going to bother you for six months? Are you... Um, that cool with your brother, he's got your back for six months. Because you need to think like that these days, y'all. And you didn't make it that way, and I didn't make it that way. And all y'all been studying about this 4G and 5G shit coming this way. You already knew the 4G was bad, everybody was whining. It's proved out to be that way. Now the 5G is here and, and going nationwide, and you're not even thinking about it. The smart meters, all the things on frequencies that they're putting around you, even your Wi-Fi box in your house from your from your landline cable or your or your uh, AT and T hardline like we got, even that's been jumped up just so you can get more range. No, they change these frequencies all the time. Change your thought press process to, to keep a, it's it's just what different ways of keeping us down. Uh, frequencies are like a leash. They're like a leash almost. It's like a, like when you got a dog in a leash and you want him to sit and you pull, you know, you walk in front of you too fast and you want him to slow down so you pull on the leash. You want him to sit, you pull back and stop. All that kind of stuff, you know, you just, it's just frequencies are controlled. And, uh, and frequencies are also a way of keeping you distracted from major things going on. Because uh, everybody, uh, 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 most of the critics and most of the debunkers uh, or want to be debunkers because nobody can debunk this. It's, it's written out in plans and they talked about it They've been talking about it since 19 fucking, in, since the fucking 1980s, since 1984. They've been talking about Rex 84, uh, him enough for America because of a problem. Not really saying what the problem was, making it a Central America threat. Now we're going through that. But it was really more related to getting Americans uh, tied up and hemmed up for what came down the line um, eight years later as being Agenda 21. Uh, so all this is in the play. You, uh, you, have to be paying attention to this because 
Listen, let's put it this way. If the you got to stop and think, even if the power went out for a week, I wouldn't even say a weekend. And that's what you should be practicing at home, in your mind and at home. Just when you come home from work Friday, just cut all the lights off. And like just for just for a mental reminder, put a piece of tape over every light switch in the house and, and just go through one weekend without power. Do everything you do in your house without the fucking power. I eat out of cans and use a hand can opener and some of y'all cry about that. And uh, and you see what I'm talking about. You got to be ready for this, baby. Think about us when, when we're united. Think about us when we're together. Think about us when we've already talked about this and we knew it was coming. Because this is what I was trying to tell you. I can understand why the government saw would not go tell the whole world, hey, we're going to have a big power outage. Uh, and they should have. I think the smart thing would have done was would have been to let this go to the world, to all the nations of the world, to all the people of the world, and say, we think this is going to happen. So we should be preparing and researching and developing new power sources and new ways to evolve and live with this upcoming structure change. But y'all, y'all know that we're run by like a few, what, 15 greedy fucking families, about 5,000 people that think they run this fucking world and it's going to collapse. So they're just sucking it all up at the last minute. They think they can even buy China out and use them for an army if, if the American and European, um, uh, the, the structure in charge right in play right now to protect them and be their army and be their strong arm. If it collapses, uh, right now. Uh, that they're going to be able to go to China and make them a new superpower just because they're all coal seam gas. I don't think it's going to make it. Big. I think electricity is electricity, and no matter what the source you get, the turbine to turn without no turbine, you ain't got no power. So I don't know what they think. I don't know what they know. Neither do you. We're in the dark. That's why we talk. But I want you to know that your headaches, uh, your bad feelings, your being angry, being uh, upset, fearful, it's not your fault. It's these frequencies they're putting in the air, and it's the natural frequencies coming from the universe, the cosmos, and our sun. Look it up. Just look it up. Look, and look up. It will affect emotional and psychological behavior. Uh, some days are better. You can, you can almost judge what kind of day you're going to have. Everybody could if you could figure out your number. You're going to have a good day, say, if the KP index is at a KP1. But if it's at a KP5, you might be a little agitated that day. If it's a KP8, man, you, you, may, you may even just want to stay inside or stay away from it. Uh, it's that obvious. Um, uh, th this has been kind of told to you in many different ways. I think there was some Tom Cruise movie, uh, the, the one where they had the pre-crime. Did y'all notice how wide out the sky was? They were kind of trying to show you that's what was going to. Look at, look at the super giant greenhouses. One greenhouse is like the size of four um, uh, football fields, um, but I mean like stadiums, like four stadiums um, uh, that Green Circle Growers uh, in Ohio, right there near Overland, Ohio. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, Kipton, Kipton, Ohio. Look up Green Circle Growers. Go on Google Earth and look down. That's your future of farming. Super giant greenhouses just. The change is coming, and I'm not here to tell you to fear it. I'm telling you to get ready for it. And the best way to get ready for it is to talk about it with your brother. Learn what we can grow now. Learn what we, you know, how we can evolve and change in our food and our food structure ourselves. But we got to stay away from the food they're going to offer us, y'all. They're looking to transhuman people to get used to that. They want you to be able to take in higher concentrations of radiation. They want you, listen, don't even fly over 10,000 feet because they, they, they're giving warnings now. That, uh, that the, like the pilots that uh, passenger flights uh, that hit 30,000, uh, 25, 30,000, 40,000 feet sometimes. Um, these pilots and, um, and stewards that work on these planes that go back and forth and the passengers all get enough radiation like 10 times a dental x-ray. Every time they fly, they get bombarded with that kind of radiation. So you shouldn't even be flying. I mean, that's how, that's how this is coming in. By the time it hits Earth, it's not that bad, but look, they're even closer to it. Um, it's just the changes that's come. And the way to get through it is to talk it through uh, and prepare, mentally prepare, physically prepare. But man, they want to, they want to, uh, you can see it too. And listen, look, go around and look at the leaves on your tree and on your bushes. Some of them are still okay. But then notice one right next to it. I'll just have a bunch of brown burn marks. Not, not where bugs are eating on it. I ain't saying that. And the next time I make a video, I'll be prepared to show you. 
I walk around here all the time and I notice that a lot of things are susceptible, more susceptible to what's being sprayed in the sky and raining back down on it. So it's even going to kill some of the flora and some of the foliage, um, especially my, probably I've seen about probably at least a third of the floor here in the Appalachians affected by um, chem crap being rained back down on it, whatever they're spraying in the sky. And I see it like burn marks on the leaves, so other people have seen it too. But um, practice up, get ready, think about it, talk about it, research, really research, uh, especially the space energy and the things we can't stop. Uh, Man, them spraying the skies and, and playing weather warfare, I don't know what to say. Uh, um, seems like areas like South Texas and Louisiana and, 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 the, and the refinery states and the power, energy power states seem to get hit a lot with a lot of that weather warfare, you know, like was Katrina made by China or was Katrina made by the U.S. government, you know. Same thing about uh, Harvey or whatever. Was it made by China to knock us out or were or they, or they, or they testing out their own grid? You don't ever know what these megalomaniacs sons of bitches, but we know they're doing something. So what can we do? Since we can't seem to do nothing about all that stuff, well, you can prepare for it, talk about it, practice, uh, go do some camping. Hey, and camp is fun and it's summertime. All right, so there you go. And take some peppermint oil with you. Uh, mix it with a little water, about 20 drops per um, half a cup of water maybe. And I spray it on you, ain't got to worry about mosquitoes, and you smell like a nice little candy cane out there in the woods, and you can have a good time. <laughs> but uh, seriously, it does keep the bugs off. So think about that. And uh, But think about what I'm telling you. It's, it's not just in your head. It's being done to you. It's not just you. There's nothing wrong with you. You're being manipulated. Don't fall for it. Don't take meds. Work around it. Think hard. Get over it. Pull, pull your britches up, pour some concrete on your brain and harden up. We need to get this shit. And I don't mean literally, that's just an Australian saying a brother told me about, about, about toughening up. You know, pour some concrete on it and harden up. And we do. We got to harden up about this and remember we are being affected, but not just by mankind. It's also by space weather. Remember that part. That part is very important. Sorry it took so long, but that's a lot of content, but it does make a big difference. First of all, in the way we look at our planet, and getting right with it so we can just live out our lives like anybody would want to. And the other thing for our brotherhood and our unity, we got to work on that. We got to keep daily. It's it's not a battle because it's a good thing. But it but it can be a struggle. It can be a struggle. Our brotherhood can be a struggle. We can get off track easy, man. You know, just a few seconds of hate can take away years of love. And ain't that fucked up. Ain't that fucked up. And I think um, Edgar Allan Poe wrote that and I just posted that some somewhere a while back. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe wrote that. Just um, years of love can be can um, can can be erased with one second of hate. That's some fucking shit. I love y'all. Peace. Prepare. Don't live in fear.